Before working on any firearm, make sure the magazine is empty and removed. Also make sure the chamber is empty and the firearm is unloaded. First things first, look at the receiver. Now the receiver is going to have, especially because 22 LR is really a dirty, it's kind of a dirty cartridge. The powders are dirty, they don't burn that efficiently. So you're going to have a lot of powder buildup inside the receiver. That's going to be your biggest problem. Um, bear in mind that this area in front of the receiver, basically where the bolt head seats, that is an area where you need to keep clean, all right? I recommend using like Q-tips to clean out this area, keep it clean, all right? Because what, what it can do is it can actually cause a problem with the head spacing of the gun and can, can cause misfires. So when you do do a disassembly, which I would recommend maybe every probably every 500 to 1,000 rounds of actually taking the bolt assembly out of the receiver and then make sure that you clean receiver. Now, I don't recommend ever using any products like gun scrub. It's not a good idea. Gun scrub can hurt the finish of this gun. It can cause some galling of the parts, the internal parts. Um, the best way to basically clean it is I recommend using WD-40s squirt a light amount inside so that you can actually take like some compressed air take some compressed air and blow it out is probably the easiest way to get it clean all right um, if you don't have the compressed air then you're left with using q-tips and basically you can use a cloth to wipe out the insides the sides all the all the flat surfaces the front of the receiver as i mentioned before where the powder buildup is. You can get most of it done with just claws and Q-tips, but if you have compressed air, it's much easier. You can even use a, like the Freon-based uh, air cans that you use for a computer to, to, to blow it out if you'd like. Now, once you have this all cleaned, I recommend that you put, you take a oil dropper, something with a light machine oil or light gun oil, and put a, put a drop of oil on all the internals, basically the trigger assembly, basically where the hammer bushing is on both sides. Put a little bit of oil on the side where the disconnector bar is. Now also bear in mind that if you used WD-40 to basically loosen up everything, you've got some lubrication in your, in your lower parts to begin with. So, you're going to have some lubricity even if all you do is blow it out or wipe it out. The last thing you would want to do when you lube it is, is take, I recommend using a Molly lube, like a trigger action lube for, for the hammer. This is, the, this is actually the sear notch on the hammer. If you, put some, if you put some Molly lube on this contact point here, basically what you'll have is, let me see, it, see if you can see it here, lock into the sear. I recommend using some lube there, some Molly lube, because this will actually help the action. It'll, it'll keep it smooth. A light oil won't generally lubricate that as well as it should be. Okay, so basically once you've got the, the receiver cleaned and oiled, make sure that you wipe off any oil off the top of the receiver. If you get any oil inside these, these screw holes for the top cap, Make sure that you clean it out. I recommend something like mineral spirits on a Q-tip. You can, you can dab it in the hole and blow it out with air. That'll dry out the hole. You really need to keep the hole dry and you need to also keep the screws dry. If you do that, you don't have to, you don't have to worry about Loctiting or torquing down the screws. Just, just be having the threads dry will keep the screws tight. All right, now that you have the lower receiver clean, really all you have to do next is Take a look at the barrel and see if we can show you how to clean it. Now, biggest thing, biggest problem with rim fires is they're going to let up the chamber. Um, I recommend you get a good brass brush. You can get you can get the best brushes from Brownells. Brown Brownells markets their own brass brushes. They're a little bit longer, and they have a lot tougher and more of the brush the bristles of the brush. So. They'll last a lot longer than some of the others. 
get yourself some of those make sure you're not using a stainless brush now generally speaking you can run the brush through the barrel several times to, to get the, the bore clean but the chamber a lot of times you can look down at it, it may still have some lead in it so if you're having a leading problem and you're having some let's say having some feeding problems because of leading you might try some some hoppies on a q-tip put it inside the chamber and let it set for whatever a few hours then scrub it until you can get the lead clean and then once that's clean run the, the bore brush through the barrel oh three or four times again and you should be good to go on that then your bolt assembly now cleaning the bolt assembly is a little trickier generally not necessary to go too in depth on the bolt assembly um, what you do need to bear in mind is that you've got to keep the breech face clean. Okay, you cannot have you cannot have any residual oil on the breech face. And when you're doing any re-oiling of the receiver or the bolt assembly, you've got to make sure that you don't leave any residual oil on the on the bolt face. Because what'll happen is the oil will get on the extractor and it'll cause you some extractor extraction failures. Best thing to do is take a really small screwdriver and actually pick the uh, corners out of the breech face because you'll get you'll get some powder residue in this recess here or you can actually take a dummy round or a fired case and actually set it on the breech face and spin it just just to clean any debris from under the extractor this is also a, a part that we recommend blowing out with air because disassembling or taking out the bolt from the top cap is a little complicated we do provide what we call a slave rod for that and basically how you do that is you run this slave rod let's back up what you do is you actually push out the rod that's existing in there and disassemble pull out the spring and the bolt from the top cap you can clean everything from there but once you reassemble it you actually have to assemble with the slave rod in the spring and set it into the top cap then put the primary rod through the hole as you would with any slave rod it's not too complicated but I don't recommend it's something you have to do very often you can you can really just clean the bolt assembly without disassembling it from the top cap wipe off all of the debris that you can see on the bolt assembly blow out and clean out with q-tips which you which you can see as well in the top cap blow it all out put put a couple of drops of light machine oil or gun oil on the recoil rod okay and then really what it comes down to is I recommend putting a little bit of oil on all of the bolt surfaces you might even try putting a little molly grease here on the back of the bolt where it engages the hammer just a high wear area here biggest thing is though do not get any oil on the face of the bolt the bolt face or the breech face or the extractor okay now once you have that re-oiled it's ready to go back together